Welcome Princeps to the last video before we actually get into the campaign itself. And as you can see, this is all about the battle groups. Okay, so as you know, we've got four battle groups. Uh, you saw that from the map. And uh, none of them can start more than 1,500 points. And at no point uh, can a battle group exceed 2,000 points. So during the campaign, they'll be taking casualties and changing weapons and all that using the armory points. But um, as long as no single battle group exceeds 2,000. Um, armory points, we're going to have a thousand in reserve um, should we need it to break into. I'm not sure how without playing are we going to have enough with the territories etc. So um, it gives us a bit of flexibility there. Um, a Titan battle group can have supporting knights um, but during a game you can only have one support banner per mana pool and that keeps the, the activation game down for spamming loads of knights into a list. And with a knight household, you can include support titans in your battle group, but you can only use one titan as support per lance in that battle. Again, that stops a knight list looking like a titan list and keeps it centered around having knights. Um, we can have side titans, but we're only going to allow one in the loyalist side uh, over four battle groups. Um, titan and banners. Okay, so experience. Um, I think in Shadow and Iron, you roll d6 for every titan or, or banner. Um, I want everyone to start at zero experience and you've got to earn those points. Um, the starting princeps I will allow to have d6 um, and that might help, it gives it a bit of a bit of flavour, shows off their rank. Titans of Legend can be used um, but once destroyed it cannot return. So if the crew survives, uh, which we'll go into a bit later, they can be put into another titan but you won't get the uh, special rules as previously, but they will maintain the experience that they've earned previously. Okay, so an engaged battle group can fight with as much or as little as their group as they wish, uh, which basically means you can build a list out of anything in that battle group, as long as it's legal. So you have one mana pool and a princeps. So in a game, uh, say I've got 1500 points in my battle group, I may only want to use a thousand points, I might have a particularly beaten up titan which I want to set out. So that's absolutely fine. Um, your opponent uh, or yourself will get the underdog bonuses for that as well. Uh, a princeps can be changed. So we're using the experience system. If another titan in that battle group gets a higher experience level than your current princeps, then you can change it. And then you can't change it again until another one gets higher. Uh, so on. Um, princeps can change its princeps trait um, every battle. Um, I want to do that. Um, it says here to show its repertoire of skills and tactical prowess. Um, I think it will just keep things fresh, be able to change mana pools within your group and uh, change the uh, princeps trait to suit that fighting style of that game uh, as you wish. And then a battle group counts as destroyed when it's engaged and cannot field a legal force. So this is to do with the map. Uh, when one piece, one battle group lands on another piece and the attacker, if that battle group, defending battle group, cannot make legal list, uh, then it is destroyed and removed from the campaign. So if you remember from the previous video, uh, destroying all battle groups is a way of winning this campaign. Salvaging the battlefield and destroyed titans. Okay, so in Shadow and Iron, there's a set of rules for at the end of the game, any uh, surviving units can scale the battlefield for destroyed titans and claim a percentage um, of their points uh, to take back as armory points. Um, now, to me, it just didn't seem right that a silenced titan, one that was laid low, just counted completely destroyed. Um, it's fine, it's on the floor. Um, they can be repaired. I didn't really like the rules. It kind of means that something that's silenced or laid low, or even wildfire, is completely destroyed and you've got to buy a whole new titan. and. I don't know about your games, but in my games, stuff dies a lot. So it didn't seem right. So we're not using the salvaging rules at all. We're adapting the survival rules on page 77. Um, and basically, silence laid low and wildfire titans will be recovered and saved on a roll of a 2 plus. And to me, that makes more sense because, you know, titans were these revered god machines and um, Mechanicum would do everything they could to bring them back 
Um, it also means that we'll be playing with more damaged titans and we'll have to repair them and spend the armory points and it kind of feels right to me to do it that way. And then of course a titan that's had a magazine detonation or a catastrophic meltdown will be completely destroyed but you can save the crew on a 4 plus as the rules and wang them straight into a fully functional brand new titan. So that to me made more sense narratively. Um, and that way we've got to spend more time um, repairing our titans and choosing where those repairs are going to go and of course fielding these damaged titans as well which I think will make games uh, quite interesting. And finally but quite importantly um, experience. So as I said before all our titan crews are going to start with zero experience I want them to earn it and uh, we're going to be using the optional campaign rules in Shadow and Iron that's on page 86 it's well worth a look at. So as your crews get experience, um, they can gain rerolls and Titan crew skills. Um, you know, it's got accurate, expert marksmanship, brawler, agile, machine born, natural leader, vanguard fighter, bombard commander, and Titan duelist. Now, I'm not going to go into those in detail, but they all sound pretty cool, right? So, yeah, if they stay alive, then um, those Titans can become pretty, pretty strong. So, I'm really looking forward to doing that. So as well as crews gaining experience, becoming more efficient killers, uh, we'll also be spending armory points on repairing our titans, but rearming them as well. And um, there's also titan upgrades, which I think is also really cool. It's on page 90 of Shadow and Iron, and these are ways of boosting your MIU and various weapons and armor and things like that. So again, I'm not going to go into detail on those. It's well worth having a look in the book. If you don't have the book, don't worry. We'll be explaining those things as we use them on our Titans and our games anyway. So um, that's Battle Groups. I hope it makes sense. Again, any questions, um, stick it in the comments. And uh, we're going to go into the starting Battle Groups. So starting with the Loyalist Battle Groups. And these will be Steve's. Battle Group Ephraim, Graphonicus. So there's a Warbringer Nemesis Titan in there with Mori Quake Cannon and two Volcanoes. And this is a Princeps Titan. A Reaver with Motive Subreactors, Gatling Blaster, Reaver Titan Chain Fist, and a Vulcan Megabolter. Then three Warhounds, all with Enhanced Ospex Relays, two with Plasma Blast Guns and Megabolters, and one with two Turbo Laser Destructors. And as you can see, you purchase the groups and you can make up whatever mana pools you wish game to game and that comes in at 1405 points next up battle group Invictus Graphonicus so three Reavers one with a Gatling Blaster Reaver Titan Chain Fist Vulcan Mega Bolter one with Apocalypse Missile Launcher Volcano Cannon and another Volcano Cannon and this is a Princeps Titan third Reaver has APOC Missiles a Melt Cannon and a Reaver Titan Chain Fist and then there's a Warlord with Ariok Titan Power Claw, paired Gatling Blasters, which you can see uh, are under refit currently, and a Sun Fury Plasma Annihilator. And that's 1,405 points. And uh, a heavy yet close combat orientated group. Battle Group, Lance of Artemisia, Household Veroni. Okay, a Questorus Knight Banner with melee weapons, battle cannons, and rocket pods and Melter Guns. Second Questorus Banner with Gatling Cannons, uh, Melee Weapons, Rocket Pods and one of them has a Melter Gun and is the Seneschal Banner. Another Questorus Banner with Melee Weapons and Thermal Cannons. Then the Acastus times two and three banners of Lancers all in units of two. And that comes in at 1490 points. And finally, for the Loyalists, Battle Group Spear of Tigris, Solaria. So a Reaver with Gatling Blaster, Melter Cannon, Turbo Laser Destructor, another Reaver with Apocalypse Missiles, Laser Blaster, and Volcano Cannon, a Warhound Titan with Camellio Line, Shrouding, Plasma Blast Gun, and Vulcan Mega Bolter, and a Warlord Titan with APOC Missiles and two Bellicosa Volcanoes, and that is a Princeps Titan, and that's at 1395 points. So 
First up, battle group Metallica, Legio Mortis. This has a Warlord with Volcano Cannon, Quake Cannon, Apocalypse Missiles and Remains of the Fallen. And this is a Princeps Titan. The second Warlord with Volcano Cannon, Sun Fury Plasma and Apocalypse Missiles, also with Remains of the Fallen. A Warhound, Plasma, Vulcan Megabolters and Remains of the Fallen. And another Warhound with two Laser Blasters and the War Master's Beneficence. And that comes in at 1495 points. Next up, Battle Group Dominatus, Legio Mortis. This has a Reaver with a Melter Cannon, Vulcan Bolters, and a Gatling. And this is a Princeps Titan. A Warhound with Plasma, Vulcan Bolter. Another Warhound with Plasma, Vulcan Bolter. Another Warhound with two Laser Blasters and. Uh, Titan of Legend, the Penumbral Reaper, and that's 1495 points. Battle Group Glorium, and these are my Legio Serpentis, and they'll be using Vulpa traits throughout the campaign. So there's a Reaver with a Melter, a Gatling, and APOC missiles, another Reaver with Chain Fist, Turbo Laser, Gatling, Disruption Emitters, and this is a Princeps Titan, a Warhound with two Inferno guns, a Warhound with Plasma and Vulcan Bolter, and a Warbringer with a Quake and two Volcanoes and Plasma Gargoyles and this comes in at 1495 points. And finally for the Traitors, Battle Group Honorum, Knight Household Maccabeus. So this has Questorus Knights times 3 with melee weapons, thermal cannons, missile pods and melter guns. And this has a battle standard and is the Seneschal Banner. Three more Questorus with melee weapons and battle cannons. Three more Questorus with melee weapons and Gatlings, two Acastus Perforians, and then two banners of Serastus Lancers, three in each. And that comes in at 1470 points. So there you have it, Princeps, a starting battle groups for this campaign. Um, if you haven't got it, I do recommend picking up Shadow and Iron. Um, it really helps you with this campaign, um, and it's a great book anyway. So um, that's it from me. And uh, we will see you on the battlefields of Crucible Forge for more thrills, spills and engine kills.